We want to welcome everyone to our, our Bible study today as we continue uh, in our teaching about the 12 apostles. Uh, we've come a, a long ways in our study. Today we are going to look at James, the son of uh, Alphaeus, uh, who's also known as James the Younger, James the Less, and we'll get into all of that as we get into our discussion about him in a few moments. But if you have your Bible, I'd like everyone to turn to Luke chapter 6, and we're going to look at verses 12 through 16. Luke chapter 6, verses 12 through 16. Now, one of those days, Jesus went out to a mountainside to pray, and he spent the night praying to God. When the morning had come, he called his disciples to him, and he chose 12 of them, and of whom he designated as apostles. Simon, who's named Peter, his brother Andrew, James, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, the son of Alphaeus, Simon, who was also called the Zealot, Judas, the son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who became a traitor. That's the reading of God's word. We'll open with prayer. Father, as we enter into this study today, I pray that you will uh, guide our thoughts accordingly. Uh, help me to uh, discern through what we have read today some truth in this that can be conveyed and shared with those who will be uh, participating with me in this study. Uh, sometimes it's not how much is said, but it's what is said and the meaning of what is said that we derive uh, the information that we need, the inspiration, and ultimately the transformation that comes about for our lives. And I pray today we will, we will learn just that through this particular disciple, this apostle whose name is somewhat obscure, and yet his name really says a lot more if we dig, in, dig into it a little bit. And that's exactly what we'll do with your help, Father. Guide us uh, into our, our understanding. To you we'll give the glory and we'll give the praise through Jesus Christ. For it's in his name we pray. Amen. <laughs> Now, I want to give you another scripture, and for those of you who have the outlines, you already have this uh, in your notes. Uh, it comes from Mark's Gospel, chapter 15, and it's one verse, verse 40. And it says, some women were watching from a distance. Now, among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James the Younger, or the Less. And this is the apostle that we're going to be talking about today. And this is the other time, and the only other time he's ever mentioned, ap apart from the listing of all the apostles when they're listed on each occasion in the scriptures. We don't really know much about him, and yet we, we know a little bit. And also, let me just give you the obvious facts. Uh, his dad was uh, named Alphaeus. Uh, and we just discovered in Mark that his mother's name was Mary. But we also learn that he has two brothers when he is mentioned. His brothers are Joseph, or Joseph, uh, as it is also uh, translated. Uh, and Matthew is his brother, by the way. So there's, those are his two brothers. Now, as far as anything else, we, we really don't have uh, information about James. We don't know about anything that he ever wrote. Uh, we, we, don't, uh, we know that he's not the James that wrote uh, the book of James that we have in the Bible. That's a whole different James. Uh, we don't have anything in our Bibles that record anything he ever said. So we don't even have a word that he might have ever spoke uh, that is recorded anywhere for us to have access to that. Uh, he, was no, he was not someone who became famous, uh, obviously. No notoriety. Uh, or uh, there's no mention of anything that he accomplished. And this is not a put down, this is just the facts. We don't have anything that gives us this kind of information. So we really don't know much about him. Uh, now, again, he is believed to have been martyred like most of the apostles were, with probably the exception of John. Uh, but we don't even really know uh, exactly where that might have happened or in what manner 
it, it probably happens. So he's quite obscure, I guess you might say, in, in, that, in that sense. And, and even his name or his nickname uh, lends itself to that uh, because he is James the Less. And so uh, he, uh, and we really know less about this James than we did the previous one uh, that we have studied already uh, in our study of the apostles. But knowing this, can still give us some things in which to consider. So I want what I want to do today is to, in reference to his name, to make some some uh, comments, a and uh, you can take them hopefully uh, for what they're worth, and and you can uh, hopefully get something uh, inspirational out of that. Uh, you can uh, you know at least have something more to think about uh, when you uh, hear this particular apostle's name. Uh, the, so the first thing that I want you to think about, and, and before you write this down, let me let me tell you, the fact that somebody is not not very well known doesn't mean by us, doesn't mean that they're not very well known by God. And, and in fact, God has done many wonderful and great things uh, through people who we have yet to hear about. We don't even know who they are. We don't know. We 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 never heard their names. Probably spoken, uh, and uh, the few that we have in our Bible are just that. A few. There are many others. I like what Paul says, and he reminds us of, of something. It's in First Corinthians, and it's in the first chapter, uh, in verse twenty-seven. Uh, if you want to jot that down, he he makes this comment for those who begin to think of themselves perhaps in the in the Corinth churches of being a little bit. A little bit better than they should have thought of themselves uh, as being something more than they really were. He says, God has chosen the foolish things of this world to put to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of this world to put to shame the things that are mighty. And the base things of this world, which uh, are despised, those are the things God has chosen. And the things which are not, and ought to bring to nothing the things that are. Listen that, to this because the idea is that no flesh should glory in his presence. It's, you know, when we get down to it, 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 it does, it's not the person, be they famous or not famous. It's God who's at work in people, both the famous and those that are not so famous, doing his work for his glory through their lives. So even though the scriptures do not tell us a lot about this particular man, James the Less, if you will, and, uh, we are going to learn some things with respect to his name that I, I think will, will be something we can take with us and, and appreciate. So here are the three things that I'm going to share with you today. If you're taking notes, you can write these things down. First of all, we're going to look at the inherent meaning of his name. The inherent meaning of his name. Uh, now, the name less, or the name uh, younger, if you will, or, or you know, we're going to think about what that means. Uh, and uh, again, it's not going to diminish anything as far as what we should think of this person. In fact, it may give us something more in which to respect him for. Uh, as, a, as a result of knowing this. So let's, let's think of his name in the ways in which that, that can, be, uh, uh, can be interpreted. Uh, first of all, James, uh, let's use the word younger. A by A, just write the word younger. Let's think of this. Uh, when you think of younger, uh, think of what Jesus said with regard to that which is young. Uh, he said, but whoever causes one of the at least of these little ones who believe in me to stumble, it would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were thrown into the sea. Jesus had a, a lot of love for those that, for the young ones, didn't he? In fact, he said, suffer the little one, you know, you know the young ones to come unto me. Uh, and he had a great love uh, for these little ones. And, uh, and we, uh, so again, uh, it, James the Younger doesn't make him something uh, you know, less, if you will, in terms of, of what God thinks of him because he has a heart, he has a heart for the young. Uh, B, maybe his name, James the Less, means James the Smaller. Uh, again, maybe, it's, maybe that's what it's talking about. Listen to this in Matthew 13 and verse 31. Jesus had this to say about small things. He said, the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed 
which a man took and he sowed in his field, which indeed is the least of all the seeds. But when it is grown, it is greater than all the herbs and it becomes like a tree so that the birds of the air can come and nest in its branches. You know, mustard seed is so small, it's just a very, very uh, difficult to see uh, with the human eye. And yet, look what it becomes. So it, even if he were uh, James the last man, he was a small person in stature, like, a, uh, you know, uh, like a, who was the guy that went up the sycamore tree? Uh -huh. uh, he was small too, wasn't he? But boy, did he leave a big impression on us and all by what he did uh, when Jesus came through his town. His response to the Lord made him big in terms of the message that he leaves with us. Everybody knows the story uh, of the man who went up the sycamore tree. Everybody, uh, uh, and little kids, they love to, they love that story in Sunday school and vacation Bible school, and they sing the songs about it as well. So if James the Less means he was young, uh, there's nothing wrong with that. If it means he was small, again, there's nothing and all, uh, you know, bad about that either, you know, because God can do things with, with, that are, with things that are small. Uh, but here's another one. Maybe James the Less means that he was uh, weaker. Maybe that's what it means, that he, that he was weaker. I want you to think about this. Uh, it's Revelation chapter 3 and verse 8. Jesus is talking to one of the seven churches, and this is what he says. He says, I know your works, and see, I have set before you an open door, and no one can shut it, for you have little strength. But you have kept my word and have not denied my name. And uh, he's going to give them opportunity. Here they were weak, and yet instead of being able to do less, they were going to do more. And uh, because of their faithfulness, and uh, because they had not denied his name. So being weak doesn't take you off of God's chart. It doesn't make you something unworthy of, of, uh, of his use. And now God loves to work with weak things because therein he can demonstrate his strength and now through that which is weak. It's when we think we're strong that God has problems with us because when we feel we're pretty strong, we have a tendency to resist him and we don't allow his strength to be uh, an advantage for us. And now we, we uh, make our strength uh, more important, which keeps us from doing a lot of the things that we could have done otherwise. But D, there's another thing that this uh, when you think of James the less that might come to mind, it may have to do with his influence or his status, if you will, and, and society. And, and uh, maybe that's why he's James the less, because he had little influence or status. Uh, I think again of something that Jesus said. It's in Matthew chapter 18. It's in verses 2 and 3. Jesus called a little child to himself, and he sent this child in the midst of his disciples, and he said, Assuredly, I say to you that unless you are converted and become as little children, you will by no means enter into the kingdom of heaven. Think about that. Think about all the other people that were witnessing and hearing this, and how prominent they were, and how established they were in terms of their learning. And, and in terms of uh, what they might have already accomplished uh, with their life. They may have been special people in their society, people that were looked up to, and yet Jesus said, the kind of people that I am looking for are, are like this, these little children who don't assume you know, so much about themselves, but they come to me in, in, in humility. They come to me in simplicity and allow me to work within them and make them into the people that they need to become. And uh, God, uh, can you imagine anyone with less influence than a child? And yet, this is somebody that Jesus uh, looked at and said, this is what I want. This is the kind of person I'm looking for. Somebody who hasn't already esta feels established in themselves and feels so much accomplished within themselves that they, they uh, cannot have room for me and for what I want to do in their lives. So maybe when we... Uh, think about him, uh, the inherent meaning of his name, uh, you know, uh, whether it's younger or smaller or weaker or a person with a, a less influence or status. Uh, maybe, maybe those are the things that are, are being understood here. But none of them are negative in the sense of what God is able to do with that person's life. None of them, uh, if you will, somehow disqualify them. Uh, from being being God's person and being God's servant. 
Uh, and that's, that's important for us to realize because I know in my ministry, I have dealt with people over the years who felt that way, who felt that they were disqualified because they lacked something, because they felt like others had something that they didn't have. Uh, even though they had a personal relationship with the Lord, uh, somehow or another, it's because they lacked other qualities that they they were not going to be uh, people that God could really do anything significant with. And uh, but that doesn't get disqualify you. And so, if for nothing else, when I hear the James the less, I, I think about those kinds of things. But I'm going to go a little deeper into the understanding of this and what it might mean. So let's talk secondly about the implied message that implied message of his name. So whether we're thinking of him as the younger, the smaller, the weaker, or the person with a, of lesser status or, or influence or whatever, uh, let's think again about those, those names, those, those tags, if you will. Uh, and uh, let's uh, say a little more about what that, what that, uh, what that means and, and, and have a little more understanding perhaps as a result. Okay, let's start with, uh, with younger. And uh, James the Younger again, A. James the Younger, it sim uh, maybe it simply implies that he, uh, that he is the Younger, that Joseph or Joseph and Matthew were older than him, okay? That might be the message of his name. So, instead, uh, so maybe we'll just take it at face value for that reason. Or let's say it's James the Smaller if you will, when we think of James the Less. Maybe like old Zacchaeus again, and uh, he was on the short side. Uh, I think of a lot of special people that are on the short side. And uh, like old Tom, Caldwell, <laughs> and he was very special. And uh, he was to me, I, I know. Uh, so his, his, uh, his uh, size certainly didn't diminish uh, uh, the, the great things about him that, 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 blessed, that have blessed my heart over the years. Uh, the, you know, that has little to do with anything. So the message of his name, again, uh, if, it, if that's what it's talking about, that doesn't take away from the message. Uh, well, James the less may be that he is weaker. See, he is weaker. And uh, I mean, he is, if he's smaller, He's, uh, if he if he's uh, if he's probably not he's probably not very strong uh, and uh, if he's younger and, and smaller maybe maybe it, it, it has to do with his uh, physical and uh, but again that doesn't matter either does it and uh, that because uh, God doesn't call us because of our abilities he calls us because we are available and we're willing to be used of him. Uh, and th for that reason, so uh, he's not he's not impressed with our strength, and uh, we uh, we uh, we are impressed with his and should be, but he's not with ours, and he's not uh, turned off by the fact that we're not very strong either. That doesn't that doesn't deter him from being able to use us. Well, let's think of D uh, again. Uh, maybe the message of his name uh, with regard to influence or status. Uh, uh, well, if he was uh, if he was younger and if he was smaller and if he was weaker, he probably didn't have very very much influence or status among people. He probably uh, he probably didn't uh, his presence didn't work up a lot of uh, uh, you know uh, awe uh, among those and when he came into their company. You know when we we look at him uh, again in terms of his status, uh, he doesn't even get a good place in the listing of the twelve apostles, does he? I mean when you think about it, he's at the bottom near the bottom of the list, not at the very bottom, but near the bottom of the list. You know the guys that are just after him. The one's a zealot, and on it, that's not, that's not. He's just above the zealot, and then the other two. One is guy got three names: Judas, uh, and, 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 and I've got two other names, which we'll talk about uh, sometime later on. And then there's Judas Iscariot, who's at the very bottom. Uh, but you know, he's way down there. So uh, maybe maybe that's what it's uh, saying. But that doesn't make him unimportant. That doesn't make him uh, again uh, without value and without usefulness. You know, we're not all going to be at the top of the list. I, I you know, I, I, I never got there. I, I never became a TV evangelist. This is about as close as I ever got. Being right, <laughs> right here. This is, this is as close as I ever got to being a TV evangelist. Uh, I, I, and I have nothing against TV evangelists. I'm just saying, you know, some of us as ministers, you know, we're, we're just not going to be, you know, uh, we're not going to be recognized as such, nor are we going to be placed in, in a position to be such. And, and we're not meant to be. And that's okay. And again, that, that doesn't take anything away from me or from uh, for others. 
it, it, it's, uh, it's a matter of, of God's choosing. Uh, of where, uh, and so, again, uh, just like when we think of the meaning of his name, the message of his name, uh, if it means these particular things we're talking about, uh, that's not demeaning. And I'll, okay, it, it just it just tells us a little bit more about him that we might be able to picture him a little better, but not think of him as less as in the sense of, of being something uh uh, uh, not much in terms of what he could have been. He, he because I think he was uh, uh, somebody who who became very special in the work of God. After all, even though he was James the less, he was one of the twelve. And think about how many other disciples Jesus had. And when he decided on his most inner circle of twelve, uh, this guy was included in that number. So that that tells you something. Uh, specific, uh, a special about his name. So the third thing I want to talk about and the last thing I'm going to talk about today in our study is the important motivation of his name. I think, I, I think James the Less should motivate us and uh, it, it, should, it should give us something in which to strive for. I, I mean, in, if, he, if he was a young person, if he was small, if he was weak, if he didn't have influence, and yet God was able to do a, a special work in him and through him, that, that should motivate me and you, all of us. That should say that no matter what we feel we're lacking, uh, we're, not, we're, not, you know, un, we're not without use in God's kingdom. We're not without uh, uh, impact and, and power even in God's kingdom because God can do great things through people who, who have the desire to be used by him. Uh, oh, by the way, I, I saw I, I saw this uh, a day or two ago. I can't remember exactly when, but when I think about motivation, little in motivation, I, I, I think about a movie that I saw a few years ago called Rudy. Any of y'all remember see the movie Rudy? Well, Sean Astin, you know, played the part, and he he was a he's a short guy anyway, and and Rudy was a short person. He had an his his, his desire was to go to the University of Notre Dame and, and play football. And yet he didn't look like a, a, a guy that was going to play football. And he and he really didn't have the, the money uh, or the or the grades, if you will, that would allow him to be uh, admitted to the University of Notre Dame. But it was so much his desire that he worked hard and he was able to get into Notre Dame. And, and he was able somehow to find the means in which to to uh, financially to be able to continue in there. And, his, and, he, and he immediately went after an opportunity to play football for Notre Dame. Of, of course, he didn't get on right away. He, they, they could, they just, he was discouraged. And, and he was discouraged about all of this over and over again. Uh, going to school there, trying to play football there. He finally, uh, down the road, made it to uh, the practice team. And, and that, that, and he, he was simply the, the, you know, like a bag, you know, like a, a punching bag. Uh, the big guys would jump, you know, just come plowing through it. But he would get up, and he would never uh, stop. He would never give in. And it, and he played hard his with every year, hoping that he would be on the on the on the varsity team. And uh, he would look to see, and his name would not be listed over and over again. If you saw the movie, you know, ultimately he, here, there was his name. He finally, some of the guys persuaded the coach, let him on. And he got on there and yet he never got to play. I, and if I remember the movie correctly, it was, it was the last game of the a season and his last opportunity to get his name in the books, the record books that he actually was a part of the team. And he had to be able to go in at least for one play. And, and when it was, the clock was ticking down and they finally talked the coach into letting him in and, and, and the coach finally gave in uh, and let him in and he got out there and sacked the quarterback. And, 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 and that was the last play of the game and the clock ticked off and uh, Rudy got his name in, in the record book. The little fella and all that became very uh, special and so much so they made a movie about him and uh, so much so they made a movie about him. So uh, again, the there's motivation. When you see what God can do with a little, it, it, it should motivate you. Because there's two things that I want you to keep in mind, A and B. A is this, little is much when God is in it. Never forget that. Little is much when God is in it. Remember David and Goliath? And all that's, that's why he's in the Bible, among other reasons. To let us know again, the giants don't always win. 
and 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 all the, they, uh, if they're not on God's side, they often they lose. And uh, and in this case, David beat Goliath, didn't he? Uh, remember Gideon? Gideon said, "I am of the least of the twelve tribes, the least of the twelve tribes, and I'm the least in the least of the twelve tribes." <laughs> so, and God used him to win a great victory for his people and, and uh, overcome the, their enemies. And uh, so God's not afraid to use the least. He's not afraid to, to use little. And uh, he doesn't feel like he's somehow uh, been put at disadvantage. And we shouldn't be feeling like we're a disadva at disadvantage either, especially when we realize we've got a great God who's working in us and working through us. Remember the little, the little lady who went by the treasury and she dropped in, I'll call it two pennies. I can't remember what it was, but she dropped in two coins and at, two, at least the two least of the coins. Uh, she dropped in the treasury and Jesus made comment what she had given was much. And uh, so the least is can be much depending on where our heart is, depending on our motivation, depending on our, our trust and our, our, our belief in God. By the way, do you know how many times the words little uh, or small are used uh, in the Bible? Uh, uh, and the only way I could get this is, uh, is to go to the, the internet. Uh, and, and I found it on here. Over 350 times you're going to find those words used. The words little and small. And uh, do you know how many times the word big is found in the Bible? Zero. Zero. Now we know God is big and we assume that's that's there, but the word itself is not necessarily there. You know, God is not looking for big. He's big. <laughs> He's the biggest. What, what can he find that's big? <laughs> Everything is so much less than him. But he is. He does have a heart and eyes that look for what is small uh, because, uh, again, it allows his greatness to shine through that. Uh, so that's what the Lord is looking for. And also little is much when God is in it. It's always much when he's in it. And the second thing, B, is this. Being unrecognized does not mean you'll be unrewarded. Never forget that. You may never get notoriety in this world. Your name may never appear in who's who or whatever. But being unrecognized does not mean that you will be unrewarded. Well, Write this down, Revelation chapter 21 and verse 14. Now the wall of the city had 12 foundations, and on those 12 foundations were the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. Guess whose name was written on one of those? That's right, it was James the Less, James the Younger, James the son of Alphaeus. His name was written there. Um, and, the, and the great city, uh, the, most, the, the most glorious thing we could ever hope to see and imagine, in that city, his name will be written, one of the names written on the foundation. How about that? So uh, evidently, God saw something special about this person uh, that uh, others may never know until they get to heaven. And, uh, but I, I, it doesn't mean that God didn't do something special with this, with this person and through him. I want to give you one more thing before I close, and that's uh, uh, Hebrews chapter 11. Uh, a lot of people uh, refer to this as the uh, Hall of Faith or the Hall of Fame of Faith. Uh, and there's a lot of the people that are mentioned uh, for their, uh, that are noted in there for their faith and, and the things that they did that, that give them such notoriety. There are several that are mentioned along there. And then as you come down toward the end of chapter 11, uh, it, it suddenly uh, talks about, you know, there's a whole lot more, but we don't have the space or the room to write about them, but they're not forgotten because they had great faith too. We're talking about prophets, he says, and women and others. Others, that seems so secure, so uh, obscure. You, 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 your name and my name might be listed in the others. <laughs> and somehow you feel like, well, that doesn't really give any attention to me. Well, you don't need it now. You don't need that attention. But you, but you haven't been overlooked or forgotten and all because you're, you're remembered in those others. And uh, most of us are. Most of us are as Christians. 
and it's not a bad place to be. I'd rather be there than the others, is to be somewhere else. So, you know, as long as God remembers us, it doesn't matter who else doesn't in that line. That's James, the son of Alphaeus, who was one of the 12 apostles. Uh, and he is someone I think that's very special in this list, even though all we know of him is pretty much his name. Uh, but his name tells us a lot. Now, next time when we get together, we're going to talk about Simon the Zealot. And his uh, uh, little uh, signature to his name tells us some uh, interesting things, too. And we'll talk about that in our, our next meeting. But I do appreciate you being here, and I want to close with prayer. Father, I want to thank you for uh, this time of study again today and for the things that we have talked about things that we have uh, have learned in light of this study uh, that sometimes it's as simple as uh, the the name or the nickname of which someone is given uh, that we find a great meaning uh, and understanding uh, of not only who they were but maybe uh, we find out something about ourselves as well so James gives us that kind of a picture we see him but we also see things within ourselves too uh, that become, uh, I think, more apparent, but, but, uh, but, uh, but more excitable. We don't think of ourselves as being so special, uh, but because of you, uh, we, are, we are different so that we are able to make a difference. You're what makes us special. To you, we give the glory and the praise. Dismiss us now in Jesus' name. Amen.